Hello, welcome to Quackalope, and today we are playing a solo game, The Rat Catcher by Platypus Industries. Now, this is a Kickstarter prototype copy that I have in front of me, a game that I have been following along with for a decent period of time, ever since I saw this front cover uh, scrolling through some social media feeds. I reached out, I asked if I could get my hands on a prototype so that I could cover it for my audience so that I could show off kind of what's happening. And also, let's be fair, I, I just kind of wanted to check it out and play it because it looks beautiful. And spoiler alert, it plays beautiful as well. This is a fascinating solo game where you are doing your very best to control and capture and kind of script the flow of rats across a city space here, a district where Magical Cheese has started unlocking abilities not only for the population that created it, us, the, the people where the rat catchers come from, the kingdom, but also the rats themselves. Now, I've got a little bit of flavor text over here in the rulebook that, of course, we will pull out in just a second. This is a Quackalope video, after all. Quackalope videos always sort of start and lean into the flavor of the game. But let me run you through what this video is going to be all about before we get to that. So I am going to go straight into the gameplay about as quickly as I can. This won't be a how to play or a breakdown. And then at the end of that gameplay, I'm gonna have some final thoughts or kind of an overview of my sense of the game and my sense of how I just played the game. Uh, to start with, though, we'll dip into the flavor text and then we'll run through the board layout here and kind of give you a sense of how the game plays, our win-loss conditions, uh, and sort of the iconography and special abilities of the characters I'm playing with, because a lot of this does have modularity to it, right? These tiles can change, the rats that are coming out can change, the nemesis boss that you're facing can change, and in fact, I have the board flipped to the wrong one already. I am facing the Broodmother... I am playing as Miss Black right down here without her level up yet. That came from a practice game. And uh, let's go ahead and start swinging into this flavor text. What say you? The tale so far. The kingdom of Bree has made a breakthrough of stunning proportions in the field of magical cheese. This new cheese seems to be able to do anything and everything including attracting the attention of every rat from across the world. The kingdom is now suffering a rat plague, infested from top to bottom with a ravenous horde of ill-tempered rodents, all hunting for the magic cheese. You are the rat catcher, the only person capable of dispelling the plague suffered by Bree, and the cheesemakers will pay highly for the cheese returned. You know the ways of the rats and must use your skills, bravery, and cunning in order to defeat them. But beware, the rats are beginning to change, and it's not for the better. So hurry. So that is the staging grounds of the Rat Catcher. This is going to be a solo puzzle where we are exploring the district, doing our very best to either take out the Nemesis, so take out the Broodmother, kind of end the Horde's lineage there, or collect ten cheese kind of gather up the cheese that has been scattered across the land before the broodmother collects 10 of her own cheese or happens to take out us because that's, that's also a thing that can happen. Over the course of the game, we'll be managing two different stages of turns. One where we run our character using our movement and our action abilities to set traps, uh, gather spells, hopefully get cheese and unlock different portions and abilities on our board and roll some dice in order to do some damage and hopefully mediate the the mice here on the board. In the second stage of the game, we will be running the mice horde itself, having them flow across different places, all looking for their specific target and eventually leveling up and growing their board as well as they gather cheese calling out people like the Broodmother or some of our uh, other special peculiar rats who are transformed due to consuming the magical substance. That's generally the structure of the game. Let me go ahead and run you through the boards and the characters we're playing. Now, in the actual Kickstarter itself, there's going to be a wide variety of 
characters and creatures that you can face, uh, along with a lot of different lore and flavor. I, I'm really excited to kind of be carried along this Kickstarter journey. So, sitting here with Miss Black. Miss Black is going to have three special abilities, so two potions and a trap. Every character has those modifications. And then areas where I can customize or upgrade her. She starts off fairly weak, not much defense and not much health, but she has a decent amount of movement and a decent amount of dice to do some attacks with. Over here for her trap, she has what's called the Rat Snatcher. So rats in a zone with this trap will suffer minus one movement. That means I can stop them in place, hopefully halt their kind of progression. Then I have Perseverance with the purple potions, which I have to unlock. I can spend a single purple token to immediately gain up to three D3 attack die to my rat catcher board. So I can gain three more die to roll and try to take some people out. And then finally, I have Rise to the Top, which is going to be my yellow potion ability. I can place one yellow token on a township that I'm currently in. And in that location, fives and sixes will end up being critical hits. Now, critical hits are important. They're wounds that go beyond your shield value, right? There's a certain amount of attacks that every player is going to be able to block. For uh, Miss Black here, that'll start out as one until I upgrade that. And for the Broodmother, that'll start out at four, which is a lot. Uh, along with that, I have the Tally Man over here to the side. The Tally Man's gonna be the place where I sell the rats I have currently captured and trade them in for things like extra dice, extra potions, extra health, or potentially extra blue cheese, which is what I would, what I would prefer. Over here on the Broodmother's board, we have a location where her score track increases. Every cheese slice she gets will level her up along the way, giving her rodents and her horde extra abilities, spawning some peculiar rats that have game-changing effects, potentially, and triggering and spawning her into the game for us to either defeat or be devoured by. Uh, the Brood Mother has a special ability called Endless Tide. Already sounds nice, right? During the spawn phase, you'll roll a d6, you'll target a rat's nest closest to where I currently am, the rat catcher, where, where we currently are, and then they will spawn white rats, or white and brown rats, or white, brown, and black rats, or a peculiar rat. So a whole mix of beautiful creatures for us to have to deal with over the course of this game. And then finally, we have our general player guide for the white, brown, and black rats. And finally, our player aid that kind of walks us through the flow of the turn, which I won't dive into right now. You'll see it over the course of the game. Our goal, simple as it may be, is to kill the broodmother or capture 10 cheese. It's not going to be that simple. Just want to go ahead and give you a heads up played this a few times. I haven't played it as much as I'd like. Uh, I'm still having fun with it. I think it's genuinely a fascinating game where the thematics of it fit the mechanics that you're playing in a really, really rich and rewarding way. And I, I haven't won yet. So uh, keep that in mind. Don't base your strategy off of the way I'm playing. Uh, and uh, let's, let's dive into this. So to start with here, the things I want to be considering. Black and white rats are going to be able to consume the cheese. Brown rats want to go for my flesh. They want to consume me. Uh, and they're going to have the most movement. I want to try to get cheese as quickly and early as possible. So this one seems pretty accessible. My concern, however, is if I go for this cheese, we might have enough to consume the other cheese that we have laying around here. We already have four on this one here. This one will only gain a maximum of four this turn, which isn't bad. This one here can absolutely gain enough. Uh, you know, I, I think defending cheese maybe is a better option than running Helter Skelter going after cheese. I'm trying to go against my instincts here. So let's start. I'll spend a movement point to go here. 
another movement point to go here. Now I could spend two movement to drop a trap. A trap would potentially, would potentially mediate the cheese rolls there. I would only need to be able to get one off of it to prevent them from eating the cheese this turn. Or I could use some of my attack die to take care of some of them right now. Now, if I move up into this location, I'm in a bit of a pickle because I am gonna get bit. So I think I'm gonna spend two movement. I'm gonna put a trap down here. I'm gonna rely on it to do the dirty work. And then I'm gonna use my final movement to move up into this location. And I'm gonna use all of my die to try to get rid of those four mice. Now my die, I'm currently looking for a four plus in order to do damage. Oh, that, that was a good roll. So I'm gonna be able to take off, let's take off two brown and a black, put them down here into the tally man. That'll prevent me, no, it won't prevent me from getting bit. But it's at least better than it could have been. So I, I'm going to be taking some damage. I've used up all of my actions. I've laid down my trap. We're moving over into the rat phase. So here at the rat phase, we're going to start with movement. And we're following a specific order. Broodmother would go first, then any peculiar rats. We don't have any of those on the board at the moment. Then we're going brown, black, white. So brown has up to two movement to try to get to me. So one, two. One, two, this one will be able to come in there. And this one will be able to come in there as well, which means they're going to be able to successfully bite me because I wasn't able to pick up that cheese. Now we're going black. Black and white all want to go after cheese. So they'll move in, they'll move in. They're going to stay right where they are. This one's moving, this one's moving. These two are coming across. Oh, no, actually these two are going this way and this one's going this way because they all want to move to the closest, most accessible, accessible cheese possible. And black rats are going to spawn more rats. So we're going to resolve our trap up here now. The trap is going to roll three die, uh, looking for a four plus in order to take rats off. That's, that's not going to do it. Just going to be honest, that was a terrible roll. I'm a little upset with whoever did that. I'll blame Jan for now. Uh, so now we're gonna go to the bite phase. The brown rats have a power of two. I have a defense currently of one. They are going to be able to bite through my defense. I'm taking one damage right off the bat. I'm going to need to heal because I am not very beefy. And then finally, we are going to the consume cheese phase. All of these rats come off because these rats gather together, consume the cheese and bring it back to the Rude mother here. That'll pop in there. No benefit immediately, but very soon that'll start to become a problem. And then no one else has the necessity. They need five in order to consume the cheese. None of the others qualify there. And then finally, we're going to spawn another pile of rats. So we're looking for all of our little spawn zones. We have like one here, we have one here. And we're looking for black rats. So we have another black rat here. So this will pop in there. Oh, and black rats always spawn more black rats. So that can continue going until it's completely out of control. <sighs> and we're checking to see, oh, it says specifically grow the never ending horde. Thanks for that. We're checking to see if we have two cheese left on the board. We do, then we'd go to the cleanup phase. The cleanup phase is going to clear off any non-activated zone. That means any zone that isn't adjacent to my character doesn't have the broodmother in it and or doesn't have any cheese. So right now, all of the zones are currently active. So they all stay in play. This cheese is gonna get eaten if I don't do something about it. This cheese I already lost. And there's a strong chance this cheese is going to get eaten if I don't do something about it as well. Let's go ahead and refresh my movement and my die. It's going to take me one, two, three, four to get down there. I'm not going to be able to do it. So, so maybe not going after the easy cheese was the wrong turn. 
possibly, because they're going to start spawning a peculiar rat, and then they're going to get their their uh, nemesis down on the board almost immediately. I think we should put down a trap for two movement, and then we have to get rid of at least... I mean, I'm going to roll them all. I've got to get rid of these brown mice. I've got to knock out the brown rats, and I've got to knock down the other ones, or I don't I, I don't really stand a chance. Because if I leave this location, those brown ones are going to try to bite me. Six, five. It's going to take out two. Two's not enough. Black is going to go, and one of the brown is going to go. I... I'm in a bad spot. I need to move. I can't take out one of these black. I need to move brown off. And I need to, uh, I think I need to leave this area. Cause right now I can, I can get out of there. I've got two movement left. Cause I can't have this brown come after me. And I've got a trap there. So minus one movement for anyone that comes through that area. The real question is, the real question is, where do I want to head? We've got three movement. I, I mean, let's go one, two, three. Let's just run. Let's give them, let's give them some cheese potentially and, and hopefully, because they're picking this one up no matter what, which means we're gonna populate the board. Let's, let's do our very best to spawn more. That's, that's the only thing I can think to do. Okay, that's gonna be my turn. Onto the rat side, they're gonna do their movement. So one, 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 two, this one does catch up with me, but that's okay. This one only has a movement of one. And these all are gonna stay right where they are. There's only five there, so if I could just roll one hit, I will prevent them from getting that cheese this turn. Two hits, two crits. Beautiful. I'll take both of those off. That trap worked exceptionally well. Okay. Checking for bites, this one does not successfully bite me. Checking for consume cheese. They are going to consume this cheese, which means they're going to spawn another peculiar rat. And the board's gonna populate, which is sort of what I'm hoping for. So, peculiar rat. The golden fleeced rat. If I defeat it, I'm gonna gain an extra cheese. So, we'll pop him down right there in that location. Okay. Rat spawning. Let's see what happens here. No black rats on the board. One's gonna pop out there. I'm gonna eat my words. There is in fact a black rat on the board, which is gonna spawn another one. Spawn one here on this cheese location. Just a brown one, not a big deal. Spawn one over here in this far location. Good for now. Now we're checking the board state. There are not two cheese, so that means we're spawning locations based on where I am. That's gonna be two more locations. Please give me Something that lets me get cheese easily. Do I go for the gamble? Draw two. Or do I connect this one like up here? And hope to get something that has a dual connection. Let's try that out. Spawn one, okay. Not a dual connection though. So those two won't won't meet up. Spawn one though isn't isn't terrible for me. Although that cheese is now really far out of the way. And of course the one that it spawns is a black rat. Brown though is not terrible. I just got to get rid of both of them. And then I can pick up that cheese. I really need to get some cheese so that I can buff myself. 
That's the lesson I'm learning. And we're gonna pull one of these mystery tokens here for this location. Okay, some yellow, yellow potions there. And then the cleanup is always gonna be looking across the board to see if there's any spots that aren't currently active. Currently, that is not the case because I am adjacent to everything that exists. Isn't it nice how the city just seems to be per perpetually infested with rats? So that's the cleanup of the rat phase. Moving on to my turn, back up to five, back up to all the dice I could ever want in the world. And I need to populate the board with the cheese that just came out. And I think our best move is to do everything we can to get that cheese. They're not gonna be able to consume that one. They are gonna be able to consume that one. I, you know, at a certain point, at a certain point, I've gotta start scoring cheese and doubling back on myself isn't working so far. So let's move this way. It'll be one movement. Question is, do I wanna drop a trap there before I move? Let's do that. Two, to drop a trap here in this location, which will freeze both of them at least. Maybe get rid of some of the brown rats that I need to deal with. Let's go ahead and roll some dice to try to take these two out. Perfect rolls. One of those is gonna be a hit. Let's, uh, let's keep digging in. Not gonna do it. Four, four will do it. Last mouse is coming off. I finally get to pick up a piece of cheese. Now I could up my defense by one. I could go ahead and unlock some of my special abilities and I do have yellow over here. hate that I'm just leaving that cheese up there, but I, you know, maybe hunting down this big guy here would be worthwhile. Let's do this. Let's buff myself to start with. Go ahead and get that up to two because I need to be able to tank a few extra hits. And then we will try to get this yellow here unlocked so we can do more critical damage when the time comes. So I still have two movement left and I have one die left. Let's move here. Go ahead and roll to capture that one. It's not gonna work. Let's stop there. That trap should be able to take care of some of those mice. And I think we might be able to get up to that one. Well, potentially. If anything, taking care of uh, the golden fleeced rat will at least give me an extra cheese. So that's going to be the end of my turn. I've used all the movement I want to use, and I've used all of my dice. Rat's turn, starting with your movement phase. You're looking for cheese. One, 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 two. You're looking for me. One, there we are. Cheese, one, one, one. Four doesn't eat it. Good. One, how much movement does it peculiar rat over here have. Three. One, two, three. Real close to me here. And then one, you're gonna move down here. You're gonna move down here. And you two are coming after me. Roll that trap. I need to get rid of, well, as many as possible, but really one of them would be enough. Double hits. Both of them are gone. Good. What do I have here? Okay, 11. 18 gets me more cheese. 18 sort of the target. Trap has been triggered, bite marks. They're not gonna be able to do anything. They kind of gnaw at the heel of my boot just a little bit. Moving over here to consuming cheese, none of them are going to trigger the consumed cheese because there's not a power of five. Remember, brown rats want my flesh, so they don't actually count towards scoring cheese and grow the never-ending horde. So, one here. 
one here, one here. It's good that I'm literally adjacent to like everything. One here, that's gonna be enough to eat that cheese. One up here and the black rat, both of the black rats are gonna spawn as well. Okay. You know, I don't, I don't hate where I am right now. If I could unlock, if I could figure out a way to unlock my yellow, I'd be in a good position to start dealing with this guy. Although he's going to start hitting me very hard, very soon. Power of three, four, uh, four, four damage blocking him. Now he actually isn't coming after me though. He's going after cheese. So he'll go here because he wants... He's going to target and try to live on cheese zones. Hmm. That's unfortunate as well. So here's the problem I'm dealing with. The cheese I need to get to is all up here. And the peculiar rat's kind of blocking the path. There was two cheese in there. I don't think I can actually do damage to the peculiar rat. I do know for a fact the Peculiar Rat can do damage to me. Now, critical hits would, would do damage. So, if I pulled one crit on the Peculiar Rat, you know, in an attempt to get that cheese, I'm, I'm really not against trying. Four defense is massive, but I think that's what I'm going to have to do. I'm going to try to hunt down this peculiar rat. So I see the glistening of fur. I'm going to move out of this location, one, two, into this location here. So now I'm stuck there. If I try to leave, I'm in serious trouble. But as long as I get a critical hit... That is going to be no hits except one critical, which is enough to target the peculiar rat here. He will come off. I have taken him out, and I gain a cheese. Thank you very much for your service. Because a critical hit will skip through right through his endurance. Let's unlock our yellow ability here and go ahead and populate my board with some yellow tokens. Now, I've used all my dice already. But I could play down. I could move one and put down a trap. Move one. They're not able to bite me as I go through. Play two to put down a trap, which might... Strong emphasis on might prevent them from getting that cheese this turn. Let's see how it works. That's gonna be the end of my phase. Now I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I'm really looking for 18. Although I could spend 10 and go and get my health up. Let's do that. So all of these are going back into the bag. I hate doing that, but uh, for an extra little buff of health, it's sort of necessary. So, let's see here. Moving on to the rats. They're going to be moving. One goes down. Two comes to me. You come to me. You all come up here as well. Just join the party. One, two, one, one. There we are. Two, one, one. Resolve any traps. Looking at three, I gotta take three out in order to keep them from eating this cheese from underneath me. It's gonna take one of them out. Doesn't really matter, because let's take out a brown one because everyone else is going to be disappearing anyway, because they are in fact going to be able to eat that cheese. <sighs> Biting me. And they're going to successfully bite me. I mean, I would have died there, so it's good that I spent that uh, that value. But the brown ones are, in fact, able to like climb on top of each other's heads and latch on to a part of my shin. 
doesn't feel the best. Consuming cheese. Five will consume this one. Which means we're spawning the nemesis. The nemesis is going to pop into a brood space in the tile that I'm in. And also, we're going to have plenty of rats to bring this cheese back to her as well. So this is where I start to feel like I'm in serious trouble. Because now, the brown rats have plus one speed as well. And during the spawn phase, the brood mother has an interesting little trick up her sleeve. And let's just layer this on. Let's just include this. If I try to leave this location, I'm, I'm going to have to fight everyone. So, and we're populating because... We don't, we don't have any cheese left on the board. I got two cheese though. I mean, I'm, it's four to two right now. Game's not over. And I could always just do my very best to kill the broodmother. That's also a valid way to win. Or if I stay there, there's a valid chance that she will murder me. Let's populate the board. One would go here, here. Here, are gonna spawn another one. Because you're a black. There. Over here. One on this with us. And I believe that's going to be it. Now the broodmother has her own little trick. Five. She is spawning two white, brown, and black on her location. Two white, two brown, two black. Right here with her. <laughs> so, remember how I said I was gonna have a hard time leaving? Or I was gonna take damage if I tried to leave? That's that's now suddenly gotten significantly more serious. So like, I just, I rush up to try to get this last bit of cheese and I see them devouring the last bits of it and under the sewer grate, just kind of a growing spine pushes up. And then I see a scurry, scurrying of baby mice and then the broodmother head kind of pops over with these blue glowing eyes. And I'm in serious trouble. I'm in, I'm in a significant, I mean, I don't want to overest, overstate this, but I'm in a significant amount of trouble. So every location that doesn't currently have cheese and isn't currently adjacent to me is going to get de-refreshed. So all of these. Nope, you're adjacent to me, so you will stay. And we are going to have to populate the board with cheese. So maybe something like that. And then maybe something. What do you think? Now let's do it here. Give me a better chance to get it. Question mark. Ooh, a second piece of cheese and another mouse spawn. So there's three cheese out on the board. We need to populate all of these locations with mice. One. Two, three. That side's not looking too bad. And I cannot let them have both of those cheese. I think I've got a. I think I've got to head in that direction, maybe. If uh, if they would stop getting black rats, that would be fantastic. What do we have up top here? Okay. <sighs> There's a chance they're gonna have what they need to cons. I mean, they're great. Let's just let's get all the rats out of the bag. What do we say? Let's just you know, instead of addressing the elephant in the room, let's just dump the rats out of the bag. Sounds good. So I believe it is my turn. And. Uh, if I leave this location, the brown rats are going to try to bite me. Now, I could knock them down. If I was able to get rid of three of them, I could leave. 
I cannot, I can't take a bite. I mean, I, I'm, in, I'm in a bad spot because there's a chance I take a bite no matter what. Let's roll attack in this location, see what sort of damage we can do. Four, four, five. I can get rid of three. Three would be enough that I don't take a bite as I run away. Now the question is, where do I want to run to? I get to control the brood mother is going to go after cheese. So I get to control her pattern and I have no dice left. So I'm not picking up cheese no matter what. I say I go one, two, three. I'm gonna drop, so one, two, three, I'm gonna drop a trap right here in this location. That'll use my last two. And maybe be able to get the, the cheese out of this space. Oh, I could have put one of those down, which would have given me a crit. I still would have had to get rid of the brown ones though, so that probably wouldn't have been the best action anyway. See, so we can pull through. I mean, I gotta buff up. I gotta ignore the Broodmother for now um, and just see, see if I'm able to buff myself up a little bit in the process. So that's gonna be the end of my turn. Moving on to the Broodmother, we're going to be moving. So let's start over here. You all are staying. You'll move down. You'll move into me. You're gonna go two, three after me, right? Because browns have plus speed one. You're going three after me. One, two, three. You two are going three after me here. So one, two, you can make it in. Okay. You're going up. Up, up, up. Mother rat here is going to move over here. It's tied between the two locations, but I believe I'm the tiebreaker. Like physically, she will try to move closer to me as she's seeking out the cheese. Now these ones, 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 one, two, three, and let's say, let's have all of you go this way, except the one that moved in there. Then one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay. Any traps that I have down, go ahead and trigger. Three, looking for fantastic rolls. It's not gonna be, we'll just skip that. We don't even have to worry about the trap that was there. Um, it's not like I was relying on it to, um, to help at all. Uh, and we're moving down to consuming cheese. Clearly, this cheese here is going to be successfully consumed by this pile of rats which means we're spawning another peculiar rat. Now see, this is the thing. I just really wanted the opportunity to show off as many of the peculiar rats as I could. So we're spawning the Filthy Snitch. Filthy Snitch is gonna pop into this location and it is gonna give me magic or potions if I deal with it. This does not get consumed. There's not quite enough. And this one here, there's not quite enough. But now we're moving down to the bite phase. So, there is a pile of brown rats here. Enough brown rats to tick my little health down one more slot because I am not very punchy. Those three brown rats are gonna be enough to like overpower me, knock me down onto the ground. I see kind of squeezing through the gate, the twisted kind of fat thighs of the, uh, of the brood mother here with hordes of other brown and white and black rats tucking themselves into the fur and the flesh. And, uh, and like my last, my last vision is me falling backwards, brown rats scurrying up onto my chest, my head kind of slamming into the cement. And then I open my eyes and the last thing I see is the sniffling nose and the bright blue eyes of the brood mother. And then her mouth opens 
saliva kind of drips down. Those two kind of buck teeth lock underneath my jaw and then blackness. And the queen that sent me down to deal with the rat infestation will not be very happy. And this poor civilization, this population that is, has an economy driven by, by cheese and magic cheese and, and dairy products will, will also not be very happy. So I got two. Broodmother got no, five and killed me. <laughs> so remember what I said at the very beginning of the video about how I've played a few times now and, and still haven't successfully won? That's kind of the case with this game. I mean, so for all of those that have skipped to a final thoughts section of this video looking for my take on the Rat Catcher, I, th I think it's a truly beautiful game that thematically and mechanically ties together in an in incredibly solid solo experience. Um, it, it really is a, a gem of a solo game. I mean, I'm intrigued by and captivated by the lore and the world and the artwork, but the mechanics of this game are also solid. I mean, it is easy for me to run this game, and yet it feels like I have this infestation of writhing and, and swirling rats, right, that are all looking for different things. Some of them are hunting for my flesh. Some of them are uh, fairly peculiar in their own right, doing odd things. They are like climbing over top of one another in an attempt to get to this cheese, and I'm doing the same thing. I'm dealing with this nest. And the broodmother is so interesting and so hard to play because she, she just increases that spawn population across the board. In fact, I, I think I forgot to, to spawn the last cycle of them there. It, it's just, I feel like with the mix, the dynamic of building the city grid out, having different creatures that are, are different play experiences that you can face, I think there's four potential ones in the core game. Uh, having these heroes here that you can play with, um, and all of them having different mechanics, different abilities that still work into the same framework of this solo game. It's right at that level of crunchiness that I want a solo game to be. It's right at that level of intricacy and decision making between strategically playing and making the best choice you can. So not feeling like the game's taking control, but also having enough randomness and luck and, and blind kind of asymmetry that I feel like this is a living being creature that I'm doing my very best to defeat. Every game I've played has felt similar and yet different. It's been a different puzzle for me to solve, a different challenge, and I've, I've died or failed in a variety of different horrific ways, uh, all of which I kind of described to myself just like I did to you. This is just genuinely such a cool play experience. And I'm really, really impressed with the fact that the designer, Matthew Aslan, did all of the artwork, all of the design. I mean, he had a community of people helping him play test and refine and, and get it to the point it is, but kudos to him for the, the work and the time and effort that it put into making this Pied Piper-esque cacophony kind of slot together into a dynamic working thing. I mean, I am, I'm very, very excited to play this prototype again potentially bring more to the channel. If, if this is received well and you all want to see more gameplay, I'd love to give, give this another swing with some other bosses, you know, potentially go up against the Rat King here and see if I'm able to take them on. Play some different heroes. I mean, on the back of this board alone, I have Madam Cage, which looks incredible. There's also a person with like big gas tanks strapped to their back. Uh, I, I would be totally down to play this again. I'm gonna be kind of trying to play it again on my own. I, I'd like to win at some point, but I'm really excited to have a finished version of this in my collection. This is just such a solid solo experience and it fits into the genre and the style of game that I just really enjoy playing. And I, I think the style of game that you on the channel enjoy seeing as well. Uh, that's the hope. That's why I reached out to Matthew um, asking to see if there was a way to get a prototype into my hands before the Kickstarter went live because I wanted a chance to show off the experience of this game. I'd heard good things 
Uh, I knew the artwork was, was, you know, it, it's got that Kingdom Death inspired, like this dark, mystical sort of presence, this overwhelming sort of horror theme that I love baked into the games that I play. I'm just, I'm just really genuinely thrilled with the fact that this game has, you know, been as fun to learn and play as it's been, and it's not going to be right for everyone, right? Solo games to start with have a barrier to entry. This has some randomness. It's not perfect information, so you're going to be doing some dice rolling. You're going to be doing some mediation and accounting. There's a little bit to manage. I'd say this isn't the easiest solo game that I've ever ran, but for, for a medium box to a small box solo game, you know, this this is one that I, I would be more than happy to get down to the table and one that I'm going to be excited to show friends. Like, I wish Jan was here to check this out. I think he genuinely would be very, very intrigued by the premise and the way that this this element of, of a flowing kind of hive of rats incorporates itself onto the game board. Thank you so much for watching. I hope it was entertaining. I don't do as much solo stuff on the channel as I, I would like, um, you know, with friends that'll come over and play the games with you. Sometimes it's easier if they'll come teach me the game as well. Uh, we are bringing more and more solo content to the page, so make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. We'd love for you to be part of the community and let me know what you're excited about or interested in when it comes to this solo game market. If you've made it to this point in the video, I'd love for you to hear what you'd like to see either incorporated into this game or other games that maybe I should try. Whatever the case though, whatever you do, remember to do the important thing. Get out and play some games. We'll see you next time. Thank you.